Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about this somewhat groundbreaking research when it comes to predicting major weather events on the planet and specifically events that we refer to as El Niño and La Niña something that I'm going to briefly explain to you in a few minutes but more importantly, the study that you can find in the description below was able to definitively and statistically relate these events to what's known as the solar cycles which, if the scientists are correct, can one day help us finally predict these very powerful events as they occur around the planet. But let's start with the description first. So on 2021, our planet has officially entered the La Niña conditions. La Niña of course being Spanish for a little girl, and essentially being the opposite of El Niño, which is the Spanish for a little boy. Now the actual naming is not really that good, mostly because it just refers to two events that are opposite of one another, but originally El Niño stems from the phrase El Niño de Navidad, which was um, basically this unusual weather phenomenon that happened um, around Peru and was basically a phrase that Peruvian fishermen used to describe this. But the event itself doesn't really have anything to do with fishermen, Peru or Christmas. It's essentially a cyclical weather anomaly where suddenly a lot of the regions in the Pacific right here become much warmer than average. And here we're talking about 3 to 5 degrees warmer. And this usually lasts for some time, possibly a few months, and then disappears to reappear sometime in the future. But occasionally this anomaly switches again and becomes La Niña. Which, as you can imagine, is basically the opposite. The temperature of water here is on average 3 to 5 degrees colder. And interestingly, both of these anomalies influence the weather and various weather conditions on the planet in a pretty much opposite way. They're basically the extreme opposites of what's known as ENSO, El Niño Southern Oscillations. And you can kind of see the graph here showing us all of the years where El Niño occurred and all of the years where La Niña occurred. With the most recent El Niño being right here, and now we've entered the La Niña event. But by just looking at this graph, it does actually kind of look somewhat random. Notice how sometimes there's a El Niño here, there's another one right here, there's nothing for a while, a lot of La Niña events everywhere, and so trying to predict them seems to be almost impossible. And because both of these anomalies refer to the changes in the average temperature of a pretty large surface area of the ocean, with El Niño representing the warmer and La Niña representing the colder anomalies, as you can probably imagine, both of these events end up disrupting normal weather patterns across the entire planet and can lead to some extreme weather conditions, including extreme storms or extreme droughts in various areas around the planet. Here are just some of the impacts between December and February during a typical El Niño, with the effects of La Niña and El Niño generally being the opposite. So, for example, a typical El Niño event will usually cause a lot of precipitation, a lot of rain and even storms in the northern part of North America, while also creating drought-like conditions in the south, including places like California and Texas, with these conditions generally lasting for about five months or so, whereas La Niña will do the opposite, it will produce a lot of rain in the south and a lot of drought in the north. But because these events seem to have global effects, they actually affect countries in Africa, they affect countries in Europe, they also affect countries in Asia all the time, including, according to some scientists, increasing the risks for certain viruses to spread as well. Trying to understand these patterns and especially trying to predict them is one of the most impactful things we can do today. Which is exactly what the scientists behind this paper decided to do. They tried to apply the old technique of analyzing solar cycles and they tried to see if there are maybe any patterns someone else missed in the past. But one major difference. A lot of previous studies usually focused on the idea of the solar cycle being 11 years long. And this is based on the observation of total sunspots on our sun. Every 11 years the number of sunspots increases, then it goes down, then it comes back again. So this is what we refer to as the solar cycle or solar magnetic cycle. But inside of the smaller 11 year cycles, there is the larger underlying 22 year cycle. The 22 year magnetic polarity cycle. With the two halves of the 22 year cycle usually not actually being equal, one being a little bit more powerful than the other. And though the 11 year cycle is defined by the number of sunspots, the 22 year cycle is defined by the concept of polarity. 
So every 22 years, the polarity of our sun returns to its original spot. And the polarity itself, in some sense, can also be imagined as this. So basically, when the north returns back to the north, that's when the cycle is finished. And so in a way, this means that the actual solar cycle is 22 years long. And the smaller 11 year cycle is just represent two halves. And so by taking this into consideration and by choosing to go with the 22 year cycle, the scientists behind this paper decided to analyze the events known as El Nino and La Nina and try to see if they can discover any correlation there. And specifically correlating all of this to the event that they refer to as the Terminator event. More specifically, to try to understand what these Terminator events are, we have to understand how the sunspots form. So generally, we're not going to find any sunspots on the surface when the magnetic lines, for the most part, appear near the polar regions of the sun like you see on this picture. But as they start traveling across the solar surface for the 11 years, that's when you start finding those solar spots. And so basically when the magnetic lines are sort of like this, that's when we generally start seeing a lot of activity near the equator of the sun as well, or when a lot of sunspots start forming in this region. But every 22 years, a lot of these bands meet in the middle and to some extent self-annihilate. They basically disappear completely, leaving the sun more or less spotless. And this is what a lot of scientists refer to as the termination event, at least when it comes to the solar termination. And a lot of scientists today believe that this is actually the true cycle that our sun has, that it is after all 22 years long. And when the scientists in this paper compared the Terminator events with the El Nino and La Nini events, they actually found a surprising correlation. Every single of the last five Terminator events corresponded to a transition from El Nino to La Nina, just like it happened right now not so long ago. And so last year in 2020, we've transitioned uh, from El Nino to La Nina, and it just so happens to have been yet another solar termination event where there were practically no sunspots at all. With the statistical analysis also suggesting that this is only about 1 in 5,000 to be completely by chance. In other words, the correlation here right now is pretty high. But despite this very obvious correlation and despite this discovery, there is really no clear explanation on how this works. There's really no understanding right now how these solar cycles influence the climate and the weather on our planet, especially when it comes to these solar cycles. We know, for example, that during the higher sunspot events, we can expect slightly higher cosmic radiation from the sun and possibly the cosmic rays coming from here might somehow influence the upper atmosphere and thus change the climatic conditions thus also influencing the water temperature. But how this works, and more importantly what all of this means to the climate of the planet, that's something nobody knows right now. Okay, that's maybe not true. There's definitely a hypothesis for everything I just mentioned, but none of them are conclusive yet. There are no conclusive facts on what's really happening with the solar cycles and how they influence the uh, weather on the planet. Nevertheless though, this is an extremely important discovery, because if the scientists in this paper are correct, and if future papers can provide further evidence to this, we might have actually discovered a way for us to predict when El Nino and La Nini events occur, at least to some extent. And by predicting these events, we might be able to prepare ourselves for a potential drought or for a potential hurricane sometime in the future. Today, there is really no good way of predicting any of this. We don't really know when a drought might happen. For example, the drought in California seemed to have been somewhat unpredictable. Or the fires in Australia from last year were also somewhat unpredictable. But assuming that the scientists in this paper are correct, there might be evidence that some of this could be coming from the solar cycles. And if so, we might be able to predict it and prevent it in the future. But it's also important not to make any strong statements or any definitive conclusions just based on this one paper. Remember, correlation is not causation, and even judging from this graph alone, we can see that the La Nina and El Nino events are still not as easy to predict as just saying that they happen every 22 years. So there's still a lot of work to be done and a lot of analysis to be made. But because of this paper, we might have come just a little bit closer to helping us understand how weather on planet Earth works and how all of this might relate to the solar cycles as well. Something that one day we might understand a little bit better. For now though, I guess we're just still learning. 
Anyway, check out the paper in the description below. If you've enjoyed this video, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Also, maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel memberships, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.